Hello everybody, I hope you are doing well. So welcome back for this new tutorial. Today we will talk about the shadows, how to create some shadows for an animated character. But before we start, let's summarize the tutorial. Before to start, we will talk a little bit about the setup. What tools do I use? How to flip your animation inside of TV Paint? How to organize your file? to work on the shadows, but also how to organize the project. I will show you how to create some bookmarks for the key poses, the breakdown and the in-betweens. Then I will comment the walkthrough. I will show you how to create the key poses for the shadows, then how to continue with the breakdowns and how to create the final in-betweens. I will not show you the whole process, but only comment the important element, the important bits. We will finish with some useful tips. I will show you how to remove the aliasing from your animation, but also how to extract the border from the shape. Maybe if you are working on a specific uh, production, you will need to extract only the line and not a full shape for the shadow. Okay, let's start. So we are inside of TV Paint. When I worked on the shadows, I only used two different tools. The first one is a big, simple brush. It's blue and that's all. And it's very, very huge. Why? Because I really like to combine it with another tool. The other tool is the lasso tool. So the lasso tool, you can find it in your different panel of tools. It's this tool. And I like also to change a little bit the setting. So I put two in the smooth and then I change replace for add. So when I do multi selection, I can add them. And this tool is great because combined with my big blue brush, I can paint inside of my selection and be very precise. I can also remove some painting if I want. So it's very simple and I really like to use this technique. Of course, you don't have to use this technique. If you want to use a brush, that's not a problem, but it's just my process. Something I really like to do also, it's to flip. It's like on paper, you know, you flip between your different drawings. Here, it's a little bit different because uh, you need to set how you want to flip. So as you can see on the left, you have all my settings. I really like to flip between the instances and I created a shortcut on my stylus so I can flip with my stylus. And something nice with the flip on the instances is you can flip between uh, two or many instances. So here on the line, as you can see, I flip between two instances then I flip between a lot of different instances. And then if I work on the shadows, I will not have all the frames when I start to work on the shadows, but I can flip between two instances and then between all the instances. So it's very great because I can work on top of my line and double check if uh, the shadows is good or not and i can compare the different drawings while flipping so it's a nice tool and i recommend to use it also when you animate on the line it's always nice to flip between your drawings before to do a line test so just before to start i would like us to have a look to the file the tv paint file so on the bottom, as you can see, I have my line. So most of the time when you work on the shadows, you already have uh, the animation of the line. It's complex, you know, to work on the shadows before the line. So here I have my animation with all the key poses, the breakdowns and the in-betweens. On the top of this layer, I have my shadows. I created a layer, it's empty at the moment, and I changed the mode for multiply. 
Why? Because most of the time the character will have some colors later and it's easier to have all the shadows in one layer on one layer and to multiply the shadows with the colors. Also, I have another layer on the top of these two layers. It's the light direction. I will later create an arrow just to have a guide for the, the light source and where I need to put shadows. You're not obliged to do it. You can maybe also use some references. We'll talk about that later. But sometimes it's very nice to have a simple little guide on the left so you can keep focus on the right light direction. One more thing about the file, as you can see, I will like to be organized. And when I will work on the shadows, I will create different projects for the key poses, the breakdown and the in-betweens. And then at the end, I will create another file to have everything combined. It's the final file. Most of the time when you're working on a production, you don't have to be this organized, but here, for the sake of the tutorial, I thought it was easier to be very organized and to apply some colors to a different file. So as you can see on the layer of the line, I have different bookmarks. I use the bookmarks as guides to compare the different keys and poses. So the red, the blue and the green bookmarks are for the key poses. These are the most important drawings here on the turnaround but most of the time of the animation. Then I have some breakdowns. Sometimes you can have many breakdowns between some key poses. Here I have one simple breakdown between two key poses because it's a symmetrical turnaround. And then I have some layers without any color. It's because it's the um, in between, it's the layer between a breakdown and the key poses. So it's very simple. I use colors because it's easier, you know, when I see my timeline to compare the different key poses. When I see red, green or blue, I know it's a key poses. Orange, I know it's a breakdown. And without any color, it's a simple in between. And then when I will work on the shadows, I will follow the same pattern. So I will start with the key poses. I will work a lot on these poses because these poses are very important. And then when I will be very happy with these poses, I will start to work on the breakdown. And then when I will be happy with the key poses and the breakdown, because sometimes when you work on the breakdown, you add more definition and maybe you want to update the key poses. When I will be happy with the breakdown and the key poses, I will create the in-betweens. And so at the end, I will have all my layers. So I will try to be organized and to follow the same pattern. And when you work on the line, on the animation, it's exactly the same process. You first start on the key poses, then you continue with some breakdowns, and then you add the in-betweens. Of course, here it's very symmetrical, so the pattern is uh, the same between the key poses, the breakdown, and the in-betweens. But maybe on an animation with something more organic, you will have maybe more key poses, more breakdown between some key poses, and maybe a few more uh, in-betweens. And if you need to um, have a lot of in-betweens, sometimes it's nice to add more colors to the bookmark so maybe you can add uh, some yellow bookmarks or something else so let's talk a little bit more about uh, the process so as you can see the first thing i do is to create two layers one for the shadow and one for the light direction i create an arrow so i will use it uh, for the guide as a guide for the light direction I come back on the other layer, I change the mode for multiply and I start on the shadow using the big brush and the lasso tool. 
After a while, remember, I already created a pose with the same lighting. So I will copy it and paste it and I will reuse almost the same light direction. I will change a little bit because this was an old design and I updated a little bit the clothes, the ends, etc. But this is a good start. I would recommend you to use a reference. Sometimes it's good to find something on internet to have maybe something to start your key poses. So here, as you can see, it's quite long. I have a lot of details and I'm only focusing on one pose. I will not show you all the poses uh, because it's a very long, long, long process. But here you can see, I try to uh, add some details. Sometimes I remove using the lasso tool. I try some stuff. The first pose is very, very important because it's to start of the whole process. It's very important to spend a lot of time on the key poses because then when you will work on the breakdown, if you did something wrong, you will have a hard time to restart on the key poses. So take your time, try some stuff and try to find also the good artistic um, decision for the shadows. Because when you're working on the values, you know, you have uh, something bright and something dark on the shadows because at the moment it's animation it's quite simple we cannot cannot add too many gradients etc try to find something that is appealing but also simple because as you can see the character already has a lot of details so if i put too many details all around the character the result will be very messy and if you saw the reference I used, the reference I had at the beginning, it's already messy and I don't like it. So I will try to uh, improve that. Here I'm working on the second key pose. So I started on the front view and then I continue on the back view. Again, I start on the extreme poses, the key poses. And then I will fill these different poses with some breakdowns in between, etc. It's a very long process, but again, it's important to take the time to improve and to uh, work on the key poses because then when you will work on the breakdown and in between, this will be easier. From here, I would recommend you to flip between your key poses. Even if you have only two drawings, it's important to double check if the shadows are consistent, but also if the light direction is consistent. As you may see also, the lasso tool is very handy because sometimes I need to work on very precise area and I can do it. And also sometimes I need to fill a huge area and it's simple to create a huge selection and with a big brush, you can uh, put a nice stroke and fill it. So it's very handy. Also, sometimes I need to remove some areas because when I flip and I compare my two or many key poses, sometimes the shadow is not on the good area. And I prefer that compared to, to have a pencil and to change the size of the pencil, then use a rubber to remove the color. This is perfect for me. I will not show you the whole process of the key poses because it's very long and very daunting. But to summarize, it's exactly the same. Every time I create a new instance and I flip between the different key poses just to see if the shadows and light direction are consistent. Uh, something very handy is to use the flip tool, but also the lasso tool and the brush tool to use some precise and to create some precise shadow. So after a while, this is the result I add. As you can see, uh, some pictures are missing because I only worked on the shadows of the key poses. I create some uh, blank instances on the, the picture just after, on the instance after. This is just to have the feeling of the shadow and to double check if everything is consistent. Uh, when I will add the breakdown later, I will have more instances and this will be easier to double check if the shadows and light direction are consistent. So let's move on with the breakdown.
When I work on the breakdown, I just create some new instances and change the bookmark color, so now it's orange. It's exactly the same principle compared to the key poses. I will create a blank instance, then I will start to fill some areas with the lasso tool and I will flip between my drawings to compare the shadows and also to see if it's consistent. Sometimes it's nice to flip between one or two key poses to work on the breakdown between these two poses, but sometimes it's nice to flip between the world drawings because maybe you did a mistake, something is uh, shrinking or uh, the scale of something is not good. And it's very important to compare the different drawings. I would recommend to flip all the time, it's very important. And if you watch some videos from um, the animator that worked on paper, they flip all the time. It's important to compare the drawings and then when you are able, you can do a line test and compare the different drawings. So after a while, as you can see, this is the result I had. Again, I added some blank instances just to have the feeling of the animation. It starts to be a little bit easier because you can use the light table to compare the drawing before and after. Sometimes it's useless, but sometimes it's very useful because you can definitively uh, find the middle or the right proportion to start to work on the shadows. So it's something you need to think about. Here are the in-betweens and the final animation. After a while, we filled all the drawings and we created all the instances. Sometimes the more drawings you add, the more mistakes you will discover. And it's good, you can always modify the key poses, but also the breakdown to have the best results you can have. And it's important to do that. Sometimes you're, uh, no, I need to come back to the key poses or I need to redo my breakdown, but it's something good. And we are very lucky to use softwares because thanks to the software, we can easily redo everything we want. And it's something I really like to do. Sometimes I focus and worked a lot on the key poses. And after a while, when I added some breakdown, I discovered some mistake and I come back to the key poses. And if I need, I redo them. Also, you, something you can think about, it's when you will work on the in-betweens, you can easily use, sorry, the light table. You can find the right uh, line between the key before and the key after. But sometimes also be careful, the light table will not show you the truth. So you need to flip between your drawings to see if it's consistent. It's very important, again, to flip between the drawings to see if the shadows or lines are consistent. We are quite happy with our animation after a while. It took me, I don't know, maybe 10 hours to finish the, the Doyen. It was very daunting because there are a lot of details and I did a lot of mistakes. But after a while, I was quite happy. It's not perfect, but I think it's good. I used the 10 hours and did my best with this amount of time. But it's not quite finished. Uh, maybe you will need to clean a little bit the shadow uh, thanks to the selection is quite aliased. So I will show you later how to remove that. Again, if you're working on a specific production, you will need to export a line and I will show you also how to export the line. So let's continue. As you can see here, we have an aliasing problem on the edge of the shape and we don't like that. When we export the shadow for the compositing department, we need the shadow to be utterly clean, completely clean. So we will remove that. So go into Windows, FX Tool, FX Tags. This will open a new window. Add FX on the top left, then Stylized and then choose Anti-Aliasing. As you can see, it corrects directly the aliasing problem. And then you can apply FX stack and this will directly apply the stack on the picture on the exposure. So we'll do that on the animation now. 
Now we want to apply that on the wall animation of the drawing. The first thing to do is to uncheck the two boxes on the left. We want this FX tag only to apply to the instances, not to create new pictures. Then select the different instances. Go to Windows, FX Tools, again it's always the same path, FX Tag, and then you will have the new window. If you already have some stuff, you can remove everything, add FX, stylize, and then choose anti aliasing. You can now apply the FX Tags, and this will apply on the different instances you have. This will not create any new instances. This only will work on what you have at the moment. And if we zoom, as you can see, the line is quite clean. This is perfect. You can export that and give that to the compositing department. If you're working on specific production, maybe you just want to export the line, not the shadow. So go into Windows, FX Tax and then add stylize and then you can choose border and so as you can see the result you will have the shadow and the line if we zoom it you can see it properly so i have a dark line and the blue shadow if you go on the left and you select border only you will only have the line and this is great and for the purples i will change the color maybe if you're working on specific production you will need to change the color of the line when I'm happy, I can uncheck the boxes on the left. I select my wall timeline and I apply FX tags. It's quite heavy, so it takes a little bit of time, but the result is very impressive and this is great. Maybe you will need to rework a little bit on the line, but I think for most of the production, this is completely perfect. This is the result. I really hope this tutorial was useful. If you have any question regarding the tutorial or my setup, please send me a message or post a comment. See you in the next one. <laughs>